after weeks of racing and an epic battle between Greg LeMond and Laurent Fignon that saw the yellow jersey handed back and forth, mere seconds separated the winner from the second place finisher. Do you want to know what happened during the 1989 Tour de France? Follow my wheel and I'll tell you. Over 20 years ago, the most exciting tour in history had cycling fans enthralled. It had everything. A brilliant route, drama, aggressive riding, and an unpredictable two-way battle that swung backwards and forwards from the Grand Depart in Luxembourg all the way to the final meters of the Champs-Élysées. Even before the 1989 Tour de France kicked off, cyclists knew a showdown was fast approaching among three of the top riders in the world, the American Greg LeMond, Francis Laurent Fignon, and the Spaniard Pedro Delgado. Whether Le Monde would be ready for the challenges of the Tour de France, if Delgado could repeat the success of the year before, and whether Fignon could claim a third yellow jersey, all remain to be seen. Flurries of speculation and conjecture erupted in the days leading up to the Tour, but when it finally began, the picture rapidly sharpened. Over three weeks of competition, the Maillot Jaune passed back and forth between Le Mans and Laurent Fignon, the last great French cyclist of his generation. It was a contest of slender leads, and the Tour approached Paris with Fignon holding a 50-second advantage over Le Mans. Many cycling fans consider the 1989 Tour not just the most competitive edition of the race, but also the greatest. Never before, and never since, had the world's premier bike event been decided in its final moments. The final stage was a time trial, a race against the clock, just 25 kilometers long. Pundits thought it impossible that Le Mans could regain enough time to win. Journalists had already written their stories, presuming Fignon's victory before the battle even began. Just after 1,600 hours on a sultry Sunday, the Paris-born cyclist watched his rival, Greg LeMond, power away from the start of the final stage of the 1989 Tour, in a final bid to take back the yellow jersey he had lost to Fignon at Alpe de Juez. For two agonizing minutes, Fignon waited as the timekeeper counted him down, and with a roar from the cavalcade of press and officials, France's favorite took up the chase. Once again gripping his unique aero bars, Le Mans flew through the course. He hit record-breaking speeds that sometimes reached up to 40 miles per hour. Le Mans nearly caught Delgado, who started two minutes ahead. Le Mans was 21 seconds faster than Fignon at 11.5 kilometers on the slightly downhill run into Paris. He reached the Place de la Concorde and sped on to the Champs-Élysées, flowing over the pavement, opening an ever-widening gap with three and a half kilometers to go up on one side and down the other to the finish line. Thousands of spectators were treated to an unforgettable last few minutes of the race as Fignon and his entourage at last thundered onto the famous avenue. One look at Fignon's face told the story. Gone was the fluid rider of that great lone break to Via Dulon three days before, when he had built what he hoped would be an impregnable advantage. Le Mans fled across the line, putting every last ounce of strength into it with a time of 26.57. And gasping, surrounded by milling reporters sensing something great, he and the rest of us waited for the moment of truth. Dwarfed in the vast expanse of the wide roadway, but illuminated in the headlights of the vehicles in his wake, Fignon strived to reach the line in time, and when there was still one kilometer to complete, we knew he was going to fail. A road went up for Le Mans from American supporters. A silence of utter disbelief greeted Fignon, as his 50-second advantage was wiped clean and eight more lost before the Frenchman brought a gripping tour to a close. In the crazy fur that swept over the race, followers in the aftermath of one of the closest tours, the rest of the result was forgotten. Le Mans's triumph threw France into disarray. Fignon was shattered and collapsed to the ground in despair after the finish line. 
Le Mans drew another round of global celebrity and won a third Tour de France in 1990 before fading amid the Inde Rain era. Thank you very much for having come this far. If you liked the video, subscribe and click like. And if you want to continue enjoying the best cyclists in history, don't miss this.